constantly shifting through the time-space continuum, Metron's three disciples observe the universe from the Mobius Couch. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me on the Mobius Couch, a time-space interdimensional vehicle from which... Your three hosts talk about the fact that Charlie XCX just announced a fifth anniversary re-release of Pop 2 on vinyl, July 2023. Yeah, we're talking about that. Oh, Pop okay. 2, by the way, features lead single Backseat featuring the one, the only Carly Rae Jepsen <clears throat> together. Charlie and Carly together. That's what we're here to talk about for the next hour. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Alessandro. And as usual, I'm joined by Joe. Oh, uh, hey, Al. How's it going? I'm I'm doing great. Thanks. Good, good, and Patrick. Good, good. good Patrick's good, here too. Good, What's up, Patrick? Good. Not much. How's it going, guys? What's <laughs> up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. So that <laughs> was smooth intro. Plot twist. Yeah, very plot smooth. Plot twist. We're not going to talk about Charlie XCX. I knew Curly it. Jepson. I knew it. Instead, we're going to talk about something about less me. interesting. We're going to talk about House of X, Powers of X, which is trash on fire. And we're going to spend an hour talking about that. Also, so, I guess uh, before we get into it, I apologize to the viewers slash listeners <laughs> for my voice sounding like a train ran over my throat. But, um, you know, we're, I'm going to power through. OK, well, let's dive in. So House of X, Powers of Ten. It was written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Pepe Larraz and R.B. Silva. Larraz did House of X and Silva did Powers of Ten. Jonathan Hickman, he's known for Secret Warriors. I never read that. He wrote a limited series about S.H.I.E.L.D., but he did do Secret Wars, which was kind of like Marvel's Christ on Infinite Earths, where they like mm, folded the yeah. Ultimate Universe into the mainstream universe. He's done some indie stuff with Image, I think he's published through. And then he's I I first heard of, heard of him with this rebrand of the X-Men, House of X, Powers of Ten, also known as the Krakoan Age. And he dropped off the book in August of 2021, but... Unlike Alessandro, I, I really love everything about about what he's been doing. So, uh, yeah. Jonathan Hickman wrote a thing called East of West that I've read that I really oh. liked. It was like a Western Did, thing. Didn't he that do was, Walking Dead? Oh, no, Robert, Robert Kirkman, Kirkman did Walking Kirkman. Dead. These it sounds all it's these very men. similar sounding. Oh. I think I read the first trade of East of West. It was kind of interesting. It was it was just a fun book. I didn't, like, it wasn't like it did feature, mind-blowing or anything. It did feature Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which I yeah. guess was great training for writing about Apocalypse and his Four Horsemen. I guess so. In yeah. X-Men. So, <laughs> good, good work. All right. Well, so let's talk about Well, we're about not here to talk about that. No, let's just talk about this. To me, um, my X-Men. To me. Yeah. My so we start. So Professor X can walk, I guess, which is fine. Well, and I, I well, think a PD is this. So it turns out he's in Phantom X's body somehow. Yes. It all makes sense. He died and it then doesn't his... make sense. Yeah. So he died and was trapped in the Shadow Realm or something. And then he took Shadow over King Phantom just X's snatched body. his soul. And yeah. then uh they went to go rescue him, and Professor X tricked Phantom X into giving up his body so he could control his body. And he comes out and he's like, Oh no, I'm Professor X, just in Phantom X's body. And all the X-Men are like, That's really fucked up. Did uh Phantom X get to choose that? And he's like, Yeah, he did. Yeah, he definitely he, did. He, he, What's Everything's fine here. Yeah. I've never done anything fucked up. And so um, now he can walk and just always has a helmet that covers his eyes and just kind of flits or flitters about flamboyantly. Um, is sort of yeah, what saying, he does now. To me, my X Men with the little yeah. hand motions. Yeah, that's like what it. he does now. As bizarre uh, as Xavier is in this, I do appreciate that he's just kind of owning the fact that he's a total creep. Like, I agree. He's very creepy. Like. You can tell that it he's was one got of the few complex. story arcs yeah. he doesn't bother me in. Well, I was yeah, going to say, I actually just, really yeah. liked Professor X in this arc. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. a really good Professor X because he's not pretending to be like a good person or a hero. He's right. just sort yeah. of a. Yeah, he's a piece of shit and he knows it and he person. just acts yeah. on it. It's great. Yeah. I actually really liked his character. Well, relatively, you know, within this trash arc. Let's, let's keep I it down into realistic levels yeah i enjoyed his character within this trash arc well also i wonder um because i just realized the connection the maker from so in the ultimate universe fantastic yeah. four Reed richards he becomes evil and his he's called the maker and his costume is basically yeah. exactly like it's Professor exactly X, the same which, it creeps yeah. me out i was like wait a second 
And I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop with Xavier in this because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, it's I think so it's similar. It's stuff. wildly similar, like, the way he looks. I'm surprised. I just Very realized bizarre. it now. But, um, yeah. I, I saw, mean, like, Xavier the second like... I saw him say, like, to me, my X-Men, I was like, wait, what the fuck is this guy? Like, I was <laughs> genuinely confused. Like, I didn't know it was Professor X. Well, I... Anyway. A weird thing mm. about Professor X... Okay. I'm going to be careful not to get me canceled with this. Hmm. Because this is coming from a very old-fashioned, gender-binary, heteronormative worldview. But visual, I'm just going to talk visually. Okay. A lot of the positions we see Magneto and Exxon and Prof Professor Exxon are very sort of like mother-father visually. They're, they're, like a lot of the scenes they're in, they're positioned as like the parental figures. Like if they were on a chessboard, he'd be the queen? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a very parental kind of yeah. figure. They're, they uh, literally refer to them as their children. Yeah. yeah. Within that, though, I'll say visually and aesthetically, Professor X comes off as the effeminate figure to Magneto's sure. masculine figure. In yeah. that hair. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of an interesting construction. I mean, have you seen Magneto? That. that guy's stacked. Everyone would look like a girl. That dude is him. jacked. That guy hits the gym a lot. He's, yeah. he's got He's got to stack up against Snyder Zeus, I think. But so I don't know if that's what they were going for or just if me interpreting it in like an old person viewing it kind of way. But I thought that was kind of a fascinating paradigm they were setting. I don't know if they were like, going for that, Magneto but that's the definitely there. Of the, the, yeah. For people who are listening to this episode that didn't read this, this was like a big rebrand for the X-Men. And it's, yeah, it's kind of like a soft reboot. Like there's a lot of retcons yeah. that have happened that, you know, I as a casual X-Men reader, I'm not going to pick out all the plot holes, but I bet some guys that have been reading the X-Men and are very well versed in their history. I'm sure this doesn't make sense. There's like a lot of stuff you just have to take at face value. But I do love the fact that X-Men are, they went from, the mutants went from being minorities to now they're like a superpower. And overnight, it's like they've developed their own culture and their own um, norms yeah. and how- Society. Yeah, mutants are so different from one another that like gender and all these social constructs that we have in our world don't really fit in their world because they just physically can't. It felt like the X-Men had become aliens. It felt like they were, yeah. for the first yeah. time I started seeing them as like not human, but of a different world. And I really loved that because it, it was kind of creepy to your point, but how they, it was like, what would these characters be like if they weren't constantly fighting for their lives and they were in a safe place and they could just be who they are? And I really love that idea. That so idea, that I, aspect of well, this is awesome. Yeah, it's I an agree. interesting growth because like when the X, you know, in the 60s, of course, this has been written about, but, you know, mutants mm -hmm. were kind of like minorities. They were on the fringe of society. They were persecuted. But it was always, it's just funny because like historically, the X-Men representing that, their goal has always been to live with humans and be part of mm -hmm. humanity. That was the right. whole reason why they clashed with Magneto because he didn't want to do that but it's interesting that now right the x-men paradigm moved from let's sink in with humanity and and all live under one rainbow of harmony into no we're just going to be on our own nation now and just be us yeah. and be different to patty's and, uh, point of like the alien nature feeling of it i really enjoyed that as well because it it kind of makes you feel like the human bigot really like yeah. for the first time ever like i've always empathized with like cyclops and right. just thought of him as a human with powers but when like when they change from this perspective it did a really good job of making me feel like they are not like me anymore you know or they yes. never were but like you know like finally yeah realizing and feeling that way which i guess isn't like the best i'm still on their side in the story and reading it but at the same time, oh, yeah. I recognize that I am not one of them, you know, like kind of thing. And I'm like, that's yeah, well, I think I've never that's felt the, that way before. But that's, I think the conscious shift they went was, it used to be like, don't worry about our differences. Let's work together. And and now it shifted. Sure. To, no, but no, then no, I, I never, different. but I never yeah. saw them as different, really. Like I was just like, that's a guy with powers, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I understand that the message was well, because they used to be. Different. I mean, but frankly, they most X-Men used to just be hot people. With <laughs> that's powers. true. That's true. They have the, gone a long we, way. We talked about in, the Grant Morrison years. run and that. Well, we talked about the yeah. Grant Morrison run and that was one of the first ones. But starting with Morrison and stuff like that, they started displaying mutants as more than just like hot people who could shoot lasers. They right. were more, more yeah. different. So I guess the two biggest 
things that are introduced in this run is a Krakoa, which was originally introduced way back in the day with the second round of X-Men recruits, like a living Island mutant. But now it's a mutant. Was island that where that Scott's not... um, where Vulcan died or whatever? Was yeah. that Krakoa or yeah. where did Vulcan was, die? Well, yeah. theoretically they all, Krakoa, yeah. all the X-Men died there and like Cyclops made it off somehow. And he went back with, that's when like Wolverine and Colossus and Nightcrawler, like that's, that's that second round of team. Right. right. That okay. everyone recognizes you know yeah so it's a mutant yeah. island that uh lives off of other mutants energy so that's it captured the x-men which caused professor x to recruit wolverine sunfire mm -hmm. all the like more international x-men to go rescue the first round and then polaris sends krakoa yeah. into the into space mm -hmm. and krakoa makes a few guest appearances i think like throughout x-men titles but they reintroduced krakoa as a sentient island that is going to live in harmony with the mutants and all the mutants will be on the island and krakoa will just like take a little bit of their life force to survive and not hurting them while they're able to live on krakoa the big things are that like they can grow portals they can grow houses and they can grow medicine those are three things that I'm like, okay, you didn't really give a good reason why the island can do this, but I'm just going to go with it. Well, the three medicine thing is just a weird, it's just a bizarre plot construct that makes no sense either. But I think, I think he kind of thought of it as their economy, like what, mm -hmm. can, like they need to um, be able to make money to be, they need to offer something to the other countries to make them dependent on them. And I think that's what he kind of came up with, but. Also, it's yeah, it's, but a that plot, it's, a later, it's a plot for later. It's a plot for later. It's not like a throwaway thing. They make the Hellfire Club like responsible for giving these drugs out to people, and yeah, I definitely um, want my pharmaceutical companies called the Hellfire Club. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's really good that's branding. Great. No, it's Hellfire. the White Queen's company. Yeah. It's within. Krakoa, they call it the hell. I know it's a jo it's a joke, Joe. Joe. Well, it's like an interesting though. Like Relax. it's an interesting power play no. to speaking no, of Krakoa, no. like their government. They they set up a whole government and to get amnesty from these other countries. They're like, hey, if you recognize us as a country, we will give you one medicine that cures all like mind diseases, one medicine that extends your life by at least five years, and one medicine that like cures all cancer. It's basically so, there's no cancer anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So countries can either accept us or and get our medicines or they can reject us and they don't get the benefit of getting our medicines. Mm -hmm. And so that that was very interesting. The whole Professor X reaching out to every person on the planet and being like, this is what's up. This is what we're doing. Like, yeah. If your government, I thought that was cool, like, too. If your government doesn't accept us, then this medicine yeah. that could save your family, you're not going to get it. So the amount of world building Hickman did to I think make that's this one of the best parts sense yeah. is, is fantastic, mm -hmm. I thought. There's just one issue that well, like always stuck with me. It's like the fourth issue of X-Men when Professor X, Apocalypse, and Magneto go have dinner with like a bunch of diplomats from other countries and Magneto breaks I down like one. he's yeah. basically like, listen up, we are making money off y'all and y'all have taught us that everyone has a price and we're just going to we're just going to buy you guys out and we're, we're going to slowly yeah. take over everything. There's not going to be a war. It's not going to be a big explosion. He's like, humanity's going to go out with a whimper, not a bang y'all are just gonna die uh, off I, I don't know it's, I, it's I a fantastic it's a fantastic yeah. issue i feel like i'd remember well, that if i read it but it is interesting ahead. because they're I'm, I'm not quite sure like in what sense hickman meant this to be interpreted but the mutant i'm going to use a term patrick the mutant agenda or whatever that x and, and magneto are are um trying to build is really, I mean, A, yeah, the, the corporate side of it is pretty apparent, like it's pretty, you know, predatory capitalist, but it's also super imperialist. Like this idea of getting populations hooked on things only you can provide is like yeah. what the British did in China with opium. And uh, yeah, so it's also, it's weirdly like a very imperialist throwback, the strategies they're using to get kind of a foothold. True, but I think the they don't give a fuck because they don't care about humans anymore. They're just like, all yeah. we care about oh, is... They don't, but no, I'm, I'm speaking more about like the references Hickman is oh, making yeah, yeah, by, sure, ha for by sure. having yeah. them use these strategies, yeah. Well, because it is, as Joe said before, like you're still on the X-Men side, but it does, yeah. you're kind of uncomfortable. Like you kind of understand the Fantastic Four and the Avengers being like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> you know, uh, even though the Fantastic Four scene with Cyclops, I mean, I'm, oh, I'm can we spend here, 10 but, minutes on that? 
Yeah, I, I yeah. want to talk about it. Cyclops is so, one of the big notes I have because Cyclops, I feel like this is the first time where I really see him as a superhero in his own right and not just like he the is the X-Men. best. He's also he could. But I want to talk about this scene because so the, the Fantastic Four are trying to apprehend Sabretooth and Mystique and some mutants who were stealing Toad. Things. Just Toad. So Cyclops walks in with just, I don't know if you guys are aware of... Um, ECE, which is enormous cock energy. It's basically <laughs> like BDE. It's basically a fatal case of big dick energy. Oh, God. Uh, it's just like a terminal case of that. Because the dick I, is the first thing he energy. says is, oh, how energy. wonderful. The Richards family. Like, he's not yeah. even like, he's not even no, remotely he phased. Just in. like, he walks in up? with swagger. And, and then. <sighs> Sue Storm is looking at him with a level of thirst that, I mean, I was embarrassed for Reed. And I know Reed's an asshole and like really is not worthy of our empathy. Yeah. But. but I just loved when Sue was like, what are you guys doing? Are you out of your minds? And Cyclops just like, bitch, y'all have been fucking murdering us for decades now. Like, can we yeah. get past this? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, we, what did you, what did you, like, Sue's like a low key Karen kind of. She's like, I just don't like, I don't mind you guys being mutants. Just like, don't do it so flamboyantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was bad. I, it's, it's this, the conversation between Reed and Scott, I think is really interesting. Oh, yeah. Too. Cause they're just yeah, no, like, it was a great Cyclops scene. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I love how Cyclops is just like, I see you. I'm going to take Mr. Creed off your hands. And he's like, no. Yeah. And he's like, yes, I am. You do understand what amnesty means, right? And he's like, uh, yeah, but. That's not going to work here. And he's like, oh, but it is because we have a new nation now and it's been recognized. So fuck off kind of thing. And he's like, I'm going to have a problem with that. And he goes, it's just like two panels of dead silence as they stare at each other. And he goes, I can see you feel strongly about this. Yes. I just love, like, it's just very, he's so calm. He's great. Cyclops is great. Well, he had some good lines too. Like even, I, for, I I'm going to paraphrase here, but Professor X basically sends them on an impossible mission. And he says, you know, is the, can you do this Cyclops? And he just goes like, well, does it have to be done? Yeah. Does it need to be done? Yeah, we'll do it. And he says, you know, yes. And we'll then it. we'll do it. Yeah. 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 So he it's, was, it's he was really, really good. He was a bad actor. Also, yeah. I think the freedom for Magneto and Xavier to be who they weirdly are naturally in these in this book is there for cyclops too and for everybody but really shines for cyclops like cyclops was held back you know from in the past from other but like yeah. he, he couldn't be who he truly was like wolverine's always been himself you know what i mean so it's not like as much of a juxtaposition seeing wolverine now versus like before but yeah. for cyclops it but seems like he's He's like, oh, fuck yeah, we're doing this? Like, I'm in, you know, and this, yeah. all, and this is how I'm going to be now, you know, kind of thing. Well, I just want to mention, I, I've sounded way too complimentary on this book so far, and I need to change. <laughs> we didn't direction. do overall takes, so we do need to do overall takes. Well, but we haven't talked at all about the actual plot, which is like different fucking timelines and... Okay, well, that's the other... Krakoa is the big... Universe, like crazy universal entities right. trying to subsume Earth. So, calm yourself. Bullshit. Let Patrick give give the basis. This of is the not arts. a story. This is not a story. It's just bullshit tossed in your face that makes bullshit. no sense. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. So the first big retcon is Krakoa, what we've been discussing. Yeah. The second one is Myra McTaggart, who's always been a human ally of the X Men. Turns out she's a mutant, and when she dies, ah, Myra McTaggart, she gets to start her life over. No, she's and not. She's, she's just. She's just Hindu or whatever with different lives, right? Is what? She's what? building up good no, karma and being reborn. No, she's no, a mutant. Did you read this? No, he didn't. Um, so I didn't. Time, he so I want to talk throat. about, I didn't understand how her powers work because, and I got to go back and find the panels now, but she makes it sound like her lives work one way, but then she's just groundhog daying it is how it actually works. What do you mean? Well, they present it as in when she dies, she's reborn like at that time, but she's not. No. She's just groundhog daying it. No, she, wait, what? Well, she relives a whole life though, but starting at the same place, right? Starting yeah, at- like it resets the entire- At birth. Time. No, she starts yeah. at birth every time. Yeah. But she is, gra okay. the, but the actual thing is groundhog life, right? She's just- she Yeah, yeah, yeah. groundhog life, life. Over yes. Over yeah. yeah, yeah. So Myra Metagert's lived like, 10 lifetimes she's in her 10th life house of x mostly for the most part follows the establishment of krakoa and powers of 10 for the most part follows all these different the lives Myra, Myra life has led. yeah because the big reveal is that professor x myra and magneto have been planning this krakoa plan for the entire time we've been reading x-men comics in mm -hmm. the background 
they've been setting up Krakoa. So that's yeah. like a big wreck on that. So the big things were Krakoa and Myra's lives. But I guess um, let's jump to Bar Sinister. Well, Sinister, I fucking love Mr. Sinister now. I he's know. He's one of my so favorite good. characters. He's so great. And um, I think I think one of the lot, one of the, so we see year zero and we see year 10 and we see year 100. Yeah. And year 10 is basically like Krakoa. So like the the year 100 stuff, I feel like I have the least interest in. Because I'm just like, yeah, I get it. It's it's showing how they'll die over and over again, basically. Like, you know, essentially. But I find it least interesting of them all, I guess. Is So there's, which one? Is, yeah, I had a hard time with the two future timelines. Because one future timeline is like 100 years in the, or 300 years in the future. And one's like 1,000 years. One, they're still yeah, fighting Nimrod. Thousand, right? And one, they're fighting like the augmented humans. Uh, or the augmented humans have already won the war. Mm. No, but isn't Nimrod still in that future? He is, but he's not their superior anymore. He's their servant. It, the, oh, yeah. You mean like when they're blue, when the humans are blue? When the humans are blue, yeah. And Nimrod's um, just a floating thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Well, at that uh, point, so, they're just in a zoo. But you don't know right. that until like the very end, basically. Right. So Myra well, said 10 lives. Her first part. life, she lives, as, she lives as a normal human and dies. Yeah. Gets reincarnated. She lives her second life being like, what happened? Am I crazy? Did the first life never happen? Figures I have out to hide how smart I am. You know, yeah. that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, she sees Charles Xavier on TV, figures out he's a mutant. She's like, oh, I might be a mutant. Let me go see Charles Xavier. She goes on a plane and the plane crashes and she dies. She gets uh -huh. reincarnated again. Yeah. She, third life meets Professor X. She's really off put by his God complex and arrogance. And she's like, fuck this guy. I'm just going to cure mm. this mutant gene. She tries to cure the mutants and she finds a cure and Mystique and Destiny find her. And they're like, bitch, what are you doing? And they set her on fire. And I Destiny, love that. Oh my God. Destiny is such a fucking. That scene awesome is so character. good. So also, God, Destiny, Destiny just really, going like, yeah. you're good. Like, this is, this is why we're going to do this. And this is how this is going to work. Cause I know you're going to come back to life, but we're bonded now. And then she's basically like, I will fucking hunt you down if you ever come anywhere yeah. near doing this again. You know, kind of thing. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, it was it was dark. It Destiny was great. Because, like, Destiny's mask is super creepy. And yes. she has this, like, Inquisitor sort of feel. It, it, she was really good. And basically, She's... doesn't she say a line like, I know you'll be back, so we're going to make this hurt? basically yes. is why yeah yeah fire. so you remember like, we just want this death to you we want you to feel this i just love how destiny's just stone cold a i know that killing you is going to kill everyone else and it's going to reset the timeline but i don't care because you're going to do it better next time and also destiny fucked myra up so bad that like eight lifetimes later she's still petrified of the woman and she's like under no circumstances yeah. can you resurrect destiny it can't happen. yeah because you oh yeah because she says that later she's like destiny's yeah. and all that we can't have can't future it. seeing people. That's not yeah. allowed or something like that. And I was just yeah. like, that's fucked up. Also, Destiny is the one who makes Moira realize that she has like a finite amount of yeah. lives. Like it's not going to go on forever. Like she, she's like, you don't like, I can see all of your futures ish sort of. And like, you only got a few, you know, like there's only so many paths your life takes, you know, kind of thing. It adds stakes to the whole yeah. gambit of her having multiple lives. Yeah, I but, think um, Destiny tells her she has 10, 10 to 11 lives. 10 to 11, yeah. And yeah. I think it's on 10. After <clears throat> after she gets burned to death by the Brotherhood of the Old Mutants, she goes back, meets Charles Xavier, and starts the X-Men. And it's very, the yeah. panels they show are very similar of the current timeline, right? It shows mm -hmm. the original X-Men, the second team that were like Wolverine, Colossus, Storm to free the people from Krakoa. And then they yeah. show like Cyclops and the Dark Phoenix killing Professor X. And I'm like, they could easily be like this whole Krakoan experiment that we're doing. If we don't, if it doesn't pan out, we can always say this was a different timeline and zap us back to where we were when the X-Men were persecuted. for. Being yeah, I think that I think that was deliberately added yeah. in, like as a caveat for the writers to come back later and be like, hmm, let's yeah. uh, let's let's wipe all this clean. I bet the uh, the editors probably got a real hard on it that like we they, we could just do a flashpoint anytime. Also, we want. Patty, if you call Moira it. Myra one more time, it's Myra. The listeners will probably scream at us. So. No, it's Mo it's Moira. Moira. It's Moira. I don't. Yeah, I'm not Moira. Scottish. I'm not going to pronounce it like that. Moira. It's Moira McTaggart. Moira McTaggart. You fucking piece of Moira. shit. So Moira, ten lives. Ten Moira, 11 lives. Moira, ten lives. 
Moira, 10 lives. Uh, so yeah, her and Xavier start a mutant uh, nation that gets destroyed by Sentinels. The next life is when she goes to the very end with the machine people and she realizes that their true villain is humans and machines coming together and becoming one thing as opposed to the Sentinel yeah. and Nimrod. And then I think the well, next life- Well, that's the life, thing that's weird, but then that's the plot twist at the end of the whole arc, which we already knew. Which was weird, Wait, yeah. It was, it was weird that they tried to present it as a plot twist because I was like, we, we knew, we already- we yeah, already knew it was established going on. it like I, I in issue three. It was sort of weird. Yeah, it was. I felt like that future storyline with the phalanx and like being absorbed into this higher consciousness thing was like a story that Hickman probably wanted to tell for a long time. And he was like, This is a good yeah. opportunity for me to tell this story that I want. That's kind of what I was saying. I think the future, future, so not year 100 with uh, like the red night crawler dude and like right. the magic colossus Rasputin. chick, yeah, Rasputin. The other one with the blue people that are trying to join the phalanx. Like, I was just like, this is yeah. so pointless. Like, I don't care about this at all. Like, it's, I get it. Like, Wolverine and Moira are still alive in the far, 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 far future. And they're like, and he's like, we finally know what we need to know. And he cast a killer or whatever. And you're like, that was kind of cool. But at the same time, you're like, man, this is a lot of work to get to like one little. Mm -hmm. That's what I didn't understand. I'm like, you survived for a thousand years to find out that the humans were the real bad guy and not the robots. Like, why is that piece of information so crucial to your mission? I don't understand. And if that's true, why don't you kill all the humans? I feel like it was more nuanced than that, but like, I'm having trouble remembering what that nuance was. But I feel like, I it, you think, know, like, I think that was, there was no nuance. It was just, was she it? acted surprised. Yeah, she acted surprised. Oh, God, oh the so actual bad. enemy. Is tech so augmented bad. humans? Yeah, but I, we knew that in issue three. The idea was that like mutants are evolution's natural next step, and the humans bypass that by integrating with machine tech. But like for that, that to is, be the reveal at the end, didn't seem like a big enough reveal for that much build. Like, well, especially since they already revealed it earlier. Yeah, it was. It and was and be another thing. So I want to say actually. The idea of juxtaposing biological evolution with artificial, i.e. technical evolution, I think is really cool. Uh, it's big. I mean, first of all, there's lots of anime about it. Like, it's a really yeah. cool sci-fi theme. And it's just completely fumbled in this arc and, like, not actually explored in yeah. any meaningful way. I think that's the problem I have um, with it. It's not yeah. It's not explored in a meaningful way. It's It's very, like, haphazard and just there, and you're like... Why the fuck am I reading this? Just save it for another it, story arc. Yeah. It, you know, like, it, like there's no reason to, to do this right now. You could just, you could hint at it in the issue where she shows her lies real fast and just be like, there's something yes. else going to happen, you know, and just be, and leave it at that. And I would have been like, Ooh, what's that mean? You know, like, and then three years from now, I'd be like, Oh, it's paying off. Oh shit. You know, but like, now it's just like, I don't know. Well, they did seemed, a similar forced. thing. Um, the movie Logan did a similar thing where it's a future where human, I mean, mutants are kind of like eradicated and the bad guy has a metal arm and they were kind of setting up this juxtaposition of like mutant human evolution and technological evolution, but then they also didn't actually explore it in any way. And it was just kind of like yeah. a nothing thing. Yeah. And it felt like that in this arc where I, I would have liked a little bit more actual exploration into that conflict yeah um, but we didn't we didn't really get that I th yeah i think the the one interesting thing was that like there's a note i don't know if you read the myra diaries or whatever myra. i read every word um i kind of hate that they have these big pages of text <laughs> between word. pages it was I, i'd I already read it once and it pained me to do it but i was like ah, i'm gonna read every one of these yeah. words i think i think there might be problems with your narrative if you have to have 18 pages of notes oh, in between each exploitation yeah yeah, yeah. What's weird too exposition, is I, but it is so. I, I like the use of exploitation instead because it is exploiting uh, exposition. But yeah, like I've read Hickman's full run on X Men, and he, he never go, goes back to these future timelines. Like they don't play any part in any substantive way. Oh, so that's a shame. It's just kind of like the uh, the Krakoa stuff. I'm obsessed with that. The future stuff. I love. Yeah, Year Ten is amazing. Like yeah. I love all of the current stuff. Like can can we talk about the mission to the sun, but Quick like them going to the sun to note. fight master mold, to stop it from turning on is like, yeah. so or mother mold. Sorry. is that makes master molds like is like so awesome. 
I love that whole thing. And when they're dying, you're like, what the fuck? And even yeah. though they like, even though they show it in the beginning, the very beginning, when he says to me, my X-Men, you don't know what you're looking at, you right. know, like at that Yeah, you don't know time. yet that they're going to be a reborn. So when, when they all, when they're all dying, I was like, holy shit, are they like legit killing Cyclops and all these people? I was like, there's no fucking way. It's shocking and it's awesome. And then at, basically, you know, at the end when they get resurrected, because they explain the whole resurrection process, you're like, oh, this is fucking awesome. I love this idea. Yeah. Like, that idea is awesome as fuck. So Wolverine burning up in the sun as he's hacking away. When t- Nightcrawler teleports him out there to hack away at the last thing, yeah. so it will, it will, br- and he's burning up in the sun, like, Nightcrawler is just incinerated instantly. Yeah, he's like instantly he basically right. teleports Wolverine out there and just dies in a millisecond. Uh, Fucking awesome as shit. It's really badass. You just see him as he's burning. Oh, up. it's he's so just good. Just taking out the thing with him. It's it so was good. pretty badass. I really enjoyed the human aspect of them trying yeah. to like yeah. ra- rally the station and like figure out where the security leak is or like or like where they're infiltrating and like. But yeah, no, the, the one guy anyway. who blows himself up that fucks up the entire plan for the X-Men, they didn't expect that at all. Like, as soon as they dock to board the mother mold, that guy yeah. commits suicide and blows up their ship. And Gene, like the next issue, I love the visual, again, going back to the visuals of Krakoa being like the organic technology. Like when Gene is like projecting her thoughts to Xavier, her head like forms in the water and like Monet shows up because they're both using their psychic powers to, like maintain contact. Like stuff like that. Yeah. I just I just really that was really cool. organic like technology of Krakoa. It, the whole look of Krakoa I think uh, is, is great. The way that they made the island look like yeah. so many interesting framing techniques. Like, like there's a shot of Cyclops and he's just standing there. I don't even remember what issue it is. It's just vines around him in a circle, but it's just a cool... Because as an yeah. artist, you're just like, oh, he gets to draw a circle around his character and emphasize the character for literally no reason because his island could look like whatever he wants it to look like. But it's just really like I like the weird circles everywhere, the weird the weird glowing circles everywhere. Like it's just interesting. Well, yeah, and I think a lot of the visually a lot of the <clears throat> point was again because the mutants are set up as the biological it looks like a utopia evolutionary. Well, but I yeah. think it also looks less metal technological, and I think consciously mm-hmm. because it's a mutant island. And mutants are biological evolution. And, you know, in this run, they're kind of contrasting them specifically with the technological and the robotics. Mm. So, yeah, Mm. that's why it looks like a very green bio utopia. I I just have a lot of respect for how much Hickman took what was already there and made it fresh. The resurrection protocols I have issues with, but Mm. I do love the fact that they were able to just like, hey, instead of like coming up with these different storylines to bring all these X-Men back, like let's just say all of them come come back through the resurrection protocol and mutant circuits are a thing. I fucking love that idea. Like combining different mutants powers for a technological purpose. The whole sinister and like, that's why I loved the the rescue and and like Nightcrawler-esque character. I was just like- Yeah, but the- I loved seeing like where the genetic playing around with would go, you know, like that was the resurrection five though was bonkers. They're just like introducing this team of like this tubby one can make gold balls and it turns out they're eggs. And then this hot chick can infuse them with. You mean the tubby one named gold balls that makes gold balls? Gold ball. He can make gold ball. And then like all these other four people end up making the balls. It's, eggs that can then rebirth mutants it's all just honestly bananas. i disagree al i think people like 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 myself and other giant nerds have been watching all these mutants with disparate powers for depending on how long you've been reading comics but in my case 30-ish years you know kind of thing and going like why don't they just do this you know and like for so right, long yeah. but i'm just saying there are certain powers out there that you're like that's wildly powerful like that guy can do that like why doesn't he just make this and he's done like so the idea of taking five random dudes and being like well with the five of them together they can bring people back to life i'm like that's pretty cool actually i i, I don't okay, care but I, I like the thing is just the specifics where they're just like fabio medina gold balls can make these bu- gold, balls. gold balls and then we discover their eggs and li- this yeah. is this so we discover their eggs the next panel which then, combined with a touch of Proteus, a little warp of reality, those eggs become viable. Like, the fuck does yeah, that mean? Yeah, they're viable eggs. Yeah. Well, this is so, I, 
It's, okay. it's not, it is, it is, it's but it's like it. within the realm of what they're capable of doing with all these yeah. random fucking powers. So for, first I like of all, it. I can make love... one person who can just make resurrection eggs. Why do you need five with gobbledygook? Because like, if you take one of them like... out, then it's interesting. Anyway, it's for he's it's setting all... up stories for later. It's it's bananas. <laughs> okay, first of all, I love because Gold Balls was introduced in Bendis's run on Uncanny X Men, and I think the idea for that character was like every power we could con like consciously conceive of has been made. Like I can't think of a new power for this guy, so he's just going to be able to shoot golden dodgeballs out of his body like that was it was like a joke like his power made no sense yeah so the fact yeah. that hickman took this like joke character and that's what i'm saying it's fun to, it's interesting to the yeah. entire krakoan society is like interesting and then he does do a decent job of being like the the resurrection protocols was something that moira and professor x were working on for years like moira in one of her notes says that she specifically like Proteus was made by her. It wasn't by accident that he was born. Proteus and Legion were both can warp reality. They were both made specifically for the purpose of being able to resurrect mutants. And I think Gold Balls, who I think is now known as Egg, his balls are just like <laughs> nor like they're, they change his name from Gold Balls. How dare they? Yeah, it's Egg now. <laughs> but like, yeah. So I, I I like I like the idea that the mutants use their powers in tandem to do things they couldn't do on their own. And there's also, also like wasn't the, Hope's whole thing in like the Phoenix stuff like that she could the whole synergy of yeah. her being around like helping the mutants synergize their powers and stuff like that was already talked about right yeah yeah and that's Phoenix that's like, power yeah 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 so I love so I mean like certain, that um, tapping that in and being like well with her there then then they can all work in tandem and it actually works like and I'm like okay I but now I buy it you know like it's like. Yeah. It's it's not any one piece. You'd be like, oh come on, one guy can just make. To your point, Al, one guy can just make eggs and they're suddenly alive again. That's fucking stupid. But like when it's five people that have to work together and it's like these certain specific powers that all add up to resurrection, it makes more sense to me. It makes what? You're both insane. It makes it more believable. You have to take it at face value. If you're if you're taking if you were to assign the three of us, be like, hey. We want y'all to take the X Men in a fresh new direction, but you got to keep it somewhat in continuity. Sixty years worth of continuity of X Men yeah. stories. Like, I think Hickman did a good job. Of, oh my like, god, he crushed it out. Int yeah, introducing these crazy concepts that still, y y if you analyze it too deeply, yes, it does fall apart. Like, there's tons of specifics we can point out that makes no sense why Krakoa is even able to do this. But I, I just enjoy the idea that their technology is so organic that they're they are the machines that make stuff like they just have to work together yeah and they can create crazy stuff they can resurrect people from the fucking dead but it's not so, but really I, resurrecting them from the dead though is it that's my big issue with the resurrection protocol well, they're making copies they're yeah, they're post-mortem cloning so when you die you die like that yeah, version yeah. of cyclops is dead the version of cyclops yeah. that we grew up yeah. with is dead this the is, fucked up part being honestly is that they won't remember the death because like whatever the last like download yes. of their brain to professor x is what they're gonna get so yeah, like i think he does it weekly he does a weekly download i think they said i mean they um, they, they talked about it but like i'm sure before that mission even like he was like let yeah. me get a fresh copy of you guys but like but it's like that, um that's an interesting like he, aspect of it too i think it's like hugh jackman of the prestige Yes, one of yeah. the clones dies every time. Like they actually. Yeah, but you don't die. know which one is the real one. Yeah, and then one of them gets to live. Yeah, yeah but that's instant. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's a gap of time for them. Like Cyclops went to the. No, but moon. it's still. I just mean it's a person dying. It's still. Yeah. Like sure, a, sure, sure. A person is gone. There is a storyline later in these books where Scarlet Witch is trying to make up for House of M, and she casts a spell to resurrect all the mutants that died on Genosha, but they come back as zombies. And this one kid who's resurrected on Genosha as a zombie, he's already been resurrected on Krakoa. So the new version of him goes to speak to his zombie self. And they're completely different people because he's grown since he's been oh, resurrected. Like they don't even really. Up. And it's like these are it's it's not really resurrection. It's, it's cloning. They clone each other like it doesn't. It helps, you know, for your friends and family to be able to see. I mean, again, assuming but... your brain was downloaded recently, it's basically resurrection. But like, there is that stopgap of time, and in that situation, which I was just talking about, that's a long gap of time. So well, he's also, like, in 
You're not the same guy. Patrick's comments, we just glossed (laughs) over. I think we need something that we need to really just spend a minute on is uh, Scarlet Witch. We got to get rid of her. Oh, yeah. Just get rid of her. You just get rid of her. She is like destiny. Just never again. Get rid of her and never again. It just she's caused way more problems than she's so many problems. Well, I mean, that was like that's like that's like Planet Hulk. It's just like get rid of him. You know, he's caused too much problems. He just caused yeah, but problems. I mean, I mean more like not a planet, maybe just kill her. Yeah, just kill her. Like yeah. a nod on a, yeah. It, she causes way more problems than she fixes. Yeah. Yep, she's the worst. The Avengers kind of suck, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I know this is like a non sequitur, but, well, I did sort of enjoy the scene where they try Sabretooth, where they're kind of like ad hoc yeah. creating laws to then apply to, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so really fucked, fucked up. up. But, so they're they're kind of inventing laws in the moment that they are then retroactively applying to Sabretooth for like having yeah. broken them. Mm-hmm. And it's it's pretty fucked up, but I thought it was sort of an interesting like we're a new nation and we have this council yeah. of supervillains basically. We've got Sinister and Apocalypse deciding what laws are. So like how do we it, it was kind of an interesting look at the fact that like Nightcrawler and Storm, Storm and Jean Grey were like, yes do it he's guilty get him out of yeah. here yeah <laughs> nightcrawler like, was like nightcrawler was shocking by the way nightcrawler is my favorite x-man of all time he's okay cyclops is a close second oh whoa time out no this is a great tangent favorite yeah. x-men go so joe yours is nightcrawler yeah nightcrawler by hands hands down but again I, cyclops neck and neck right there cyclops nightcrawler, no, you just gotta favorite. we're just going with one so but you're going with nightcrawler nightcrawler, nightcrawler, nightcrawler. is your official answer all right patrick your favorite um, x- or x-person for most of my life, it's always been Jean Grey mm-hmm. since I was like a kid. However, based on this run, Hickman's run, and then Bendis's run on Uncanny X-Men when Cyclops is like a mutant terrorist or labeled a mutant terrorist, I think Cyclops, like at the current at this current moment, Cyclops is my favorite character of all X-Men. Yeah, so my answer, mine's always been, I, I also have a close second, but my number one is I've always liked Cyclops. Yeah, I've he's just awesome. always Interesting. Awesome. We're all Cyclops people? Yeah. He's fantastic. Well, I, when crazy. I was a kid, I just liked him. He is him fantastic. W- when I was a kid, my first X Men exposure was the cartoon show. Yeah, cartoon. And he's I just thought like cartoon. he's the cool, he's the leader. He's like a strong leader. I just liked yeah. his character. I thought he was awesome. I have a, my, a close second is Colossus. Oh, oh okay, a solid pick. I've always okay. liked Colossus. Nice. I like that. I just like his powers, and he's just like a he's a rock. He's steady. I've just kind of liked. Uh, He's like a Patty, does, does Cyclops edge out Jean Grey for you, though, currently, then? Like, currently. And we're talking about, like, because preparing for this episode, I wanted to catch yeah. up on all these X-Men comics that I hadn't read. And I really just fucking love Bendis' run on Uncanny X-Men when Cyclops is just like, fuck it. We, I'm Magneto now. I'm the Magneto. Like, we yeah, have yeah. to be Magneto. Yeah. And I'm it. And from that run as well, like, Magic, Ileana, Rasputin. She's mm-hmm. also now like one of my favorite characters in Marvel. She's fantastic. Magic's awesome. Honestly, weirdly enough, House of X made me love Nightcrawler. Like I, I don't feel like he's been handled well in recent years. Yeah. And then this Nightcrawler specifically in this book and moving forward, I was like, this is that's the Nightcrawler I I fell in love with. Like he literally just teleported Wolverine out to the sun. Like selflessly, without even a thought. Yeah. Like he was like, "Yeah, you got to do." We it. have to do. We have to do. Yeah. And I was like, "That's that's my nightcrawler." And he when he first teleports onto the station, he's like, "What's her name?" God, I forgot already. Uh, Karima. He's like, "Ah, oh, Karima." Karima. He's like, you. "He's like, oh, hello, Karima." <laughs> and he's like, "I see you picked a sign." He's like, "I think you guys already did that." And he's like, "Well, oh, maybe." And he just he just spams away, and <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "That was amazing." He was pretty good. Yeah. He was great. <laughs> also. Is are all the mutants like nudists now? Because like when they got resurrected, they just like walked out naked, just like well, stood there in front of everybody they, with their dicks hanging reborn. out. And they were like, yeah, they were reborn. Yeah, but yeah. you could be reborn in like the private chamber where they were and like given no, a robe or I something. Think, but or I a think towel. in that situation, <laughs> but in that situation, you want to showcase the the beauty of the mutant body. Yeah, but also the resurrected like, mutant going body to, in all its glory. Like, just want to they're still covered in like. Goo. Like gold, gold, mutants, gold ball goo. Some of the mutants goo. don't have clothes. Like Herman Glob, he's never in clothes. Like, so uh, 
I, I just that's thought true. That playing into the the fact that like all the X Men are polyamorous now, and like they've broken down all the human like social constructs. Yeah, yeah. But I that's what I'm saying. I kind of love that. Like I yeah. I was joking about it, but I sort of love that they just like walked in there like here we well, are. I love uh, this one little panel with. Gene, Scott, and Wolverine. Oh, that's a very end. Of all, that's a very yeah. Scott's hand is uh, sensually placed on Wolverine's chest, and they're locking eyes. No, he's I, doing uh, like he's like gesturing. It's not on his chest, dude. It's on his chest. There. No, his other arm's like he's leaning on him, isn't he? I, I like to think it's on his chest, and they're about to have a three-way. Is what I well, like they definitely have, they definitely heavily imply that Cyclops and Wolverine have had sex um, in this run. Not um, in this run, but in later. In later, in, in Hickman's yeah. run, yeah. Which they, I mean, I, that I, that, I, that I, panel listen, that I was guys, talking about I'm certainly sets that. that up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I just wish there was a conversation. We've had decades of Wolverine and Cyclops having this tension over Gene. And now we're just expected to believe that they're just like Turns down out. with orgies. Like I Patrick. would have loved to have just like one issue where they discussed it being like, Hey, uh, yeah. Um, cause it makes sense. If you think about it, like you have telepathic mutants, empathy mutants, like mutants can get yeah. on a level that like, humans certainly can. Jean gray could, could communicate to both of them in yes. very yes. intimate ways. Like why she's in love with both of them, you yeah. know, like for obvious reasons, like, and, that, and just, and be like, let me not explain it to you at all. Here's my feelings or like, yes. here, here's what this means, you know? And they could be like either reject or, and or accept that. But like, that would be an interesting issue. Maybe and that will like, still come. Yeah. Well, I just, I yeah, think, that doesn't uh, need, to, need to be told up front to, to show what's happening now. Yeah. But happening. I think maybe, maybe the tension between the two wasn't about Jean. It was just about each other. Maybe, maybe, she, was just the maybe she was just the vector they needed to travel through to get to each other. And again, yeah, though, but it I doesn't wish... exclude her though. Like it's right. not like excluding. Well, her. I mean, the pa the panel I'm looking at, she looks like she's a little bit staring from outside the house, looking okay. through <laughs> the window to inside the house is sort of what it looks like. Well, I'm honestly. not I'm not arguing with you. I I think it's open to interpretation. I'm just like I'm just telling well, you. Well, I'm way that I'm interpreting I read it. it as Wolverine and Cyclops are in the house and Jean's outside looking in that window and it's cold outside. I'm just uh, saying, like, they're, they're a classic case of, look, Cyclops, type A, leader, everything by the book, Wolverine, loner, maverick. The tension and attraction is, is just natural. Like, just a hypothetical, like, how do you think Professor X reacted when he found out that Cyclops and Gene were in an open relationship? And, like, do you think he made a pass at Gene? Yeah, know for sure. He's, he's, he's had a hard-on for her forever. Like, how did Gene handle that? Being like, um, he's like, I'm in this new young Phantom X body. <laughs> yeah. Check out my tight black tights. Oh, so God. I honestly, I don't think Professor X has ever thought, has spent one second thinking about someone who wasn't himself in his lifetime. I don't think I he would have even noticed. That. Yeah. Well, he's I don't obsessed. know if he even would have noticed. He's obsessed with Gene, though. He's always been yeah, obsessed. Yeah, he kind of is. Him. Yeah. In terms of in terms of the overall story, them involving like the evil mutants and what they're doing because they're accepting Fucking all mutants. Loved it. I love. Thank you. It's awesome. Okay, now, now can we talk about sinister? Now let's talk about sinister. So sure. What the but hell I was going to talk about apocalypse. But sure. Well, so Bar yeah, Sinister is yeah. what a, mi a million sinisters just living in the same house, being sinisters together. Apparently, he was just cloning himself over and over again. The sinister <laughs> that we knew is the mutant sinister that like took I, over I, and maybe. I fucking him. love that. So yeah, only retcon. one of the sinisters is mutant. I, I love that retcon. So only one is mutant. The, the one others the are just sinister. I love how clones. he's obsessed with capes and keep that gag going throughout like most. Of oh my god, they, they do so call good. back he's, the cape thing. He's yeah, the, always call the, back the, a lot. the <laughs> insane nature that they write him in this book is so good. It's so good. He's fantastic. He's so good. Okay, uh, but I so the other sinisters love every are just aspect of human it. clones, and one of them is like a clone that became a mutant somehow. Yeah, he he got Thunderbird's DNA somehow, and he injected Thunderbird's DNA into him and made himself a mutant. Mm -hmm. But here's here's something that's kind of disturbing. Did, did, did when Professor X and Magneto is like, "Hey, we need you to start cloning mutants." And, you know, if you want, we can get you some valuable DNA samples that you might have right. access to. Yeah. So did Professor X fucking give Sinister, Jean Grey, and Cyclops' DNA? Oh, I think so. Yeah. That's sure. so fucked yeah. up. That's yes, so I crazy. think it is. Yes, I think it is. The fuck? Meaning, like, Cable? 
or what are you getting at cable strife metal and Hope. fire yeah uh, like <laughs> yeah all of it i love no, how... yeah patrick he definitely gave them all the x-men dna because yeah. they used sinister's dna stash to resurrect them mm -hmm. yeah directly yeah. so yeah, yeah. He... the 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 slow building of the society like the bringing on a forge to create the depositories of mutant yeah. knowledge like the bringing on of the white queen to handle like the business logistics side of everything like and how how reticent she is she's like ah, i don't know you know kind of thing like she's not even on board right away which is hilarious you know like yeah. i they handle white queen very well i think oh yeah um he does great with emma there, there's there's certain there's certain things that i'm just like i love i i kind of love how he's brought everyone together and just like mashed them into a giant pile where he can just play with them whenever he wants it's yeah like very brilliant who is banshee's cousin black tom like he's uh, totally black tom Cassidy? he's so yeah. interesting in this because he like merges yeah. with krakoa because he's got plan powers like storm i feel like storm even though she's a main x-man and she's been a leader of the x-men i've never felt like she's really been handled properly and i think where she's at now is like the best version of her ever beast beast has basically become oh, beast like is great yeah. He's become like Dark Beast from Age of Apocalypse. Like he has no more he really? ethics. He's like all about well, he science. Well, he wasn't. He That's wasn't really fantastic. featured in this. I he love Dark no. Beast. Age of Apocalypse, Dark Beast. Like, there's a reason they kept him around after the Age of Apocalypse yeah. was over. Everyone was like, Dark Beast is awesome. Bring him back. It's just so interesting to see the mutants. Like they, Krakoa is a new nation, but they're all like very devoted to it from the get go. And Beast is in charge of X Force, which is like still going with the Black Ops theme. And he's got like no like to protect Krakoa, he's like got no morals anymore. He just does Oh shit. Morals. Seriously? That's and awesome. Yeah, he's fucking he's like borderline like I could see him becoming a super villain eventually. Very good. I can understand Al's argument that this is like batshit insane, because it kind of is, and it's a lot of exposition. But it's just too much. It's just too that much comes out of this. Now. Yeah. Yeah. He should have just done the House of X and not Powers of Ten. Yeah, it's a lot of work to get us where he wants us to be so he can write the stories he wants to write. But yeah. well, but was the story I just read good? That you know, like no, that's the question. It's, it's just know. twelve it's twelve issues of exposition and setup for an arc that is interesting after. So it, yeah, right. it's not yeah. a good it's not a good actual I don't know. I think that like the mission of the sun was awesome. Um uh, what what are the good what are the good parts? Mission of the Sun. Well, the powers of ten stuff with them with the Myra stuff, like the different timelines, you could have oh, made Patrick, that one issue for me. Patrick, that it's fine. Moira. Moira, Myra, Moira, Moira. Moira. Get, like the Moira. internet's gonna yell at you so much. What is this Moira thing? Like you're oh, what? It's okay. always been Moira. It's my Myra. Myra. No, it's <laughs> you're never out of your been mind. Myra. It's never been Myra. You're out of your fucking mind. So one character we haven't talked about at all that I kind of enjoyed is Nimrod. Yeah, he's fantastic. He was sort of fun. <laughs> He's awesome. When he's asking if he can experiment on someone, and the, and the panel is him going like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. Just being like a little child, like, oh, I get to experiment with someone." I think that was kind of the point. Like that was him in his infancy, you know. Yeah. And, and then, then it shows he, him. Then he just uh, he just works Apocalypse, <clears throat> like just fucks that dude yeah. up, which is pretty badass. That fight yeah. was awesome yeah. though. Apocalypse shows three, up. Like, you mean? Yeah, and Apocalypse yeah, yeah. shows up like I'm the greatest mutant of all time, and Nimrod's just like, I'm gonna stomp you. Just yeah, that stomp was cool. you dead because I'm. That was pretty badass. In Powers of Ten, the future version of Zorn was uh, I enjoyed him because he was unhinged. Um, when he's like, "We're probably going to die," I've never been more excited in my entire life. <laughs> I also loved Rasputin in the future pulling off Zorn's mask and just annihilating mm -hmm. everybody. That was great. Mm -hmm. It had moments. I think Powers of Ten had a lot of like good action sequences, but the overall story of it just I didn't. Yeah, it was just out, bananas. Really. Yeah, yeah, it was just crazy shit. They start talking about the like solar system consciousnesses yes, becoming. Yes, I was like, that's the part where I'm like, I'm not. I'm, I don't care. Which I don't care. Universe consciousnesses was. I don't care about your extrapolation on where shit. society will go a jillion years from now. Like, I don't care. Like, it's just not important. That's not like don't put it in the story. 
or like hint at it and use it later but like it's it just, just felt like uh bro what if black holes were really yeah, like, like what if what if they were a what if human consciousness and will they get like, to the point where and they're blah, 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 all blah, blah. like who cares uh, yeah and all black holes are like connected bro like think about it like brains wait a second they're connected bro they're like connected like, it's like corn chowder if? and money you know that's what i kind of felt like i was reading i was just like I don't, yeah i don't give a shit about this at all yeah it's like a blockchain of <laughs> universal consciousness yeah. patty um let me ask you a question from the future from the future um from the future since you've read ahead um how much is the quiet council like actually used like is it politics like do they do they just use that to splinter the books off and then all the books deal with like one or the other of them or does it really like do they interact a lot do they make decisions together like Everything with Hickman, it's like it, it, it's good because you've got Professor they X. They ever have their way. <laughs> good. Well, you've got Professor X and Magneto and Moira doing their thing, and then you come to find out that Doug and Krakoa, like they kind of have their own secret little cabal, and then you find out that like you know Mystique is working with Emma, and they're trying to get Destiny resurrected, and it's it's all this like different intrigue type stuff. But circling back to the Quiet Council with the whole Sabretooth thing, how fucked up is mm -hmm. it? Okay, so if you kill a mutant, they can be resurrected. Yeah. How fucked up is it that the punishment is that you have to be sucked into the bottom of Krakoa, you're fully conscious, you just can't move or do anything. Mm -hmm. You just stare into an abyss. That's actually... So Patrick, I'm reading a book now mean? called... I'm reading a book now called The New Japanese Minimalism, which is about how the less possessions we own the freer we are and i think basically saber new state is the freest that any human could ever be so actually you're free from anxieties and worries you have nothing to do or worry about so well, actually theoretically a in a thousand years he'll realize that and they'll let him back yeah out. so what they gave to him was actually a gift they gifted him a life free from worldly matters and, and needing to murder i mean a year or two in like prison is one thing but a year or two in like solitary confinement yeah. is another thing entirely and like that's insane like isn't it more damaging than good like maybe it like a week in my like opinion, a week would be plenty opinion. like you might be if, crazy well, it after, depends. Like, well it depends so do you think the justice system should punish or reform that's the question clearly Krakow uh, is going for punishment yeah because yeah. I, I don't know how much reform can be happening when you're in a nightmare state in the bottom of an island. Another Krakoa rule we didn't talk about, which goes back to your favorite, Joe. Yeah. But Nightcrawler. they asked Nightcrawler his random opinion on something, and he creepily smiles and says, make more mutants. So he fuck. just wants to fuck. He we just wants fuck to as fuck much more. As possible. <laughs> What's yeah. wrong with that? I mean, nothing, Sounds but it's awesome. just, is it, I thought he was like a religious monk, and he's just like, we should fuck. I also love that uh, the cuckoos are back to five, the five and one. The yeah, one that's one. important. Thank you. I love yeah. that. They should be the five. They should be the five and one. Yeah. That's what they were meant to be. That's what they were meant to that's be. Um, I do. So I do love Magneto in the first issue. The uh, like other diplomats come to meet him. I just yeah, love the political stuff, especially with Magneto, because his posturing, <laughs> it sounds mm -hmm. so stupid when you're talking to superheroes in the middle of a fight. But when you're talking like in a discussion with diplomats, it makes sense. And I just, yeah. I just feel like Magneto is so much cooler in this. See, I disagree. I actually, he was my least favorite character. I just thought he had nothing really to do or say in this world. I, I uh, really, you know what? I kind of agree with you, Al, but no I think purpose. it's because he's gotten what he wants finally. You know, like this is what he, this is what he's maybe, always yeah, wanted. Yeah, maybe. But I, I just thought like so he's like I'm kind of good. You know, kind of that, like it's not like he's like handicapped in the in the issue or whatever like he's maybe not like he's but i just back, uh but. i thought professor x was a much more engaging figure out of the yeah. two of them magneto just felt like why why are you even around he was the character i kind of thought they i don't know how to phrase this i think they knew the least what to do with his character huh okay in this arc. He was just kind of there just because he's Magneto. Yeah, I mean, he's he's but, the absentee father, you know? Yeah. Well, he, yeah, I guess, yeah. He definitely plays more of a role going into it, but just focusing on these 12 issues, he didn't. Other than that very first issue where he, like, pops off on all those diplomats, 
Um, he He's important really in the sense that he would fuck everything up if they didn't bring him into the fold. Yeah. But you're right. In terms of him being in the fold, he doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, I just felt like he didn't really have a defined or interesting role in in anything that was going on. He he was just kind of parroting whatever Professor Rex said and like vaguely threatened stuff here and there, but that was just kind of it. Well, one point again about X and Magneto I wanted to make. You know how I talked about them as like a a parent figure. A dichotomy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But the fa- another fascinating wrinkle aesthetically is Magneto, the masculine, is wearing white and and Professor X, the feminine, is wearing black. And in a traditional hetero marriage, the man wears black and the bride wears white. So that's another fascinating man, wrinkle man. to that relationship. That's, that I to again, I don't know. I wonder that I did not analyze it. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if that's something the artist wanted to put into it or not. It or must be, maybe that was right? written because in. I, I, I don't know, but I just it's interesting because their posturing is one is male, one is female, but then the color scheme is the other is male, and the other is female. I just yeah. I just thought the whole thing was kind of interesting how they're aesthetically representing the two of them. I'm looking the at the scene where they go and meet Moira in her little tank underwater. You know. And they walk in, and just the way they walk in, like, Professor X is standing behind Magneto, just kind of, I don't know, very demurely, like, standing behind him. And he's up front, all in white, like, holding tea or whatever. I'm just like, it's very interesting. I, I know I've been harping on it a lot. I, I just found their relationship and them as a pair really interesting, visually. Like how You know what it is? It's like, it's... Visually, yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, so every time, like, even them just walking into a scene, like... Magneto will be like strolling in like I'm a man and be like very strong and Professor X is always like, Well, what's over there? And just like, you know, and like he's you know what I mean? Like he's just like looking off or he's kinda of like the way he's standing is very relaxed and maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just relaxed versus he's got a stick up his ass. I don't know. Yeah, but I just thought it was interesting. And again, color scheme wise though, Magneto's wearing bridal colors and Professor X is the groom mm. in that relationship. I feel All right, like we, we didn't, didn't really talk do about it. the future enough, but that I like, don't want to talk about the future. It never at all. comes back. I mean, if it doesn't matter, then I guess it doesn't matter to Patrick's. Point. It's yeah, just there to show back. that, like, this is the only path they can take. That's yeah, the that's point. like that's Moira's big lesson is like the we always lose every time I've so been yeah, Patrick. Yeah. I'm we sorry, always. Patrick. It's it's Myra. Oh God, damn. Myra <laughs> is how you pronounce it. <laughs> Moira Rose. Moira. Moira McTaggart. Most beautiful girl in Scotland. <laughs> she is the most beautiful girl in Scotland. Oof. What's your overall right. take, Patrick? Okay, so cut your brain off from Dawn of X. If we're, What's we're your overall take on, on these um, yeah. twelve issues, it is all over the place, and it's a lot to take in. And I really love the House of X. I love the stuff that's more focused on the establishment of Krakoa. I felt like the 10 lives of Myra could have been a one shot issue. Moira, Myra McTaggart. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt like that could have been a one shot issue. I, 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 we've talked before how I typically, I think Joe, you also are a fan of, you know, dystopian futures for some reason, these, futures, yeah, I've talked about that a lot. I yeah. Yeah. Just didn't care to know what was happening. Again, that one issue where they just go, then I, then I married Magneto. You know, or whatever. You know, like that. That was yeah. enough for me to be like, that was yeah. cool. You That's know, like cool. that was all I needed. Magneto yeah. overthrew the government, and y'all like took over the entire planet. And then just that That's one cool. shot of like every superhero like coming crashing yeah. down on Magneto. Yeah. I was like, that was great. That was perfect. Yeah. That's all I needed. So yeah, it. I I do get Al's criticisms of how it's all over the place. The the future stuff with you know the big reveal that the humans are the real bad guys, not the Sentinels. Like. Duh, like the humans made the Sentinels. One little wrinkle, I did love how Moira has that one saying in her one life. She goes through and she kills all of the Trasks uh, so that the Sentinels are. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and the Sentinels are and like the Sentinels are created anyways. And she goes, I learned in that life that AI isn't something to be invented. It's like fire. It's something to be discovered. And no mm-hmm. matter what I did, like AI is going to come out of the woodwork and it is going to be focused on killing mutants. That's just like a fact. So I can't yeah. stop that from happening. It's how to prepare to how to fight it. Um, so there was a few things with powers of 10 that I thought was good, but overall love everything about Krakoa, but the future stuff, 
I could have done with a whole lot less of that. Mm. But overall, I recommend it. I know you said this to, to, to you know separate it from Dawn of X, but I recommend it just because it's good setup for everything that comes next, which in my opinion is is fantastic. Okay. Al? Don't read this. I don't know if I need more details, but it's just it's all bullshit. Don't read it. If the if the stuff that comes after is good, read that and Wikipedia summary, whatever the fuck is going on here, but it's not a good arc to read. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Classic Al. <laughs> I don't know. Something could be said for uh, reading something that's not necessarily amazing on its own to get the groundwork for something that comes later. And I think there's enough good in this that I would say read it because it's classic, awesome X-Men adventure with like the mission to the sun and like the establishment of Krakoa is like establishing a new norm that if you jumped into those books, I think you'd be like, what the fuck? Wait, who's with who now? Like, you might be pretty confused. I don't think it's something you can skip. Is it something you could summarize on Wikipedia? Probably. But it's much more fun to read it. And then, yeah, there's a lot of junk in here that you don't necessarily need. But, like, I think overall I still I still like it. I still appreciate it. The art's really good. The writing's really good. It establishes a lot of tiny things that will blossom into storylines later on. And I think I think that's important to, like, I don't know. Get the little basis of that. Just like Apocalypse brooding in the background while Xavier and Magneto watch fireworks is awesome. Like just like, and that's like little nuances setting up how they're going to be while they're all together later on, you know, kind of thing. And I, I like that. I mean, you talked about this panel quite a bit, Al, but like Wolverine and, and Cyclops and Jean Grey all hugging each other. Like, you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Like, that's interesting to see that's, starting or blossoming into like what you will read about later. But um, that doesn't detract from this actual book. I think Moira's lies are interesting. They're just, maybe it could have been conveyed in a different way. Maybe it was too expounded, but um, it was still done well. And it was interesting making her a mutant. And there's a lot of good stuff in this. So I would, I, I recommend it's a good, it's a good book. I have one final note I forgot about. Yeah, this goes to the character designs. Um, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I love Cyclops' new costume. And it's yeah. kind of an homage to his previous costumes because mm-hmm. it's the blue and black like from the like 2000s era, like Astonishing X-Men and everything came after, after that. Yeah. The design, though, is from Bennis' Uncanny X-Men run. But then he's got the pouches on his waist that are like kind of very 90s. So I loved everything about Cyclops' outfit. Yeah, Cyclops was kind of amalgamated into like the best Cyclops yeah. costume ever. So Cyclops, great. I fucking hated that they put Jean Grey back into her fucking Marvel Girl yeah, costume. She, she yeah, Marvel Girl green. costume is weird. What yeah, the she fuck? had a green and gold. That was kind of strange. Why? Yeah. Like, I love that costume for like nostalgia's sake when they would do flashbacks and she'd be wearing that or something like that. But mm-hmm. what are you doing? What are you doing? Go talk to Emma and get a makeover stop. <laughs> what is happening? So I just want to make that point. I hated I yeah. hated the Marvel Girl callback outfit. It just looked so stupid for one of the most powerful mutants on the planet. I also well, I also I'm not a big fan of the Wolverine kind of like burgundy and whatever tone thing he had in Brown this and one. yellow. I'm not a big, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that yeah. one either, honestly. I don't mind the Wolverine brown and yellow. It doesn't bother me all that much. Nah, I don't know. Uh, not, one one last thing I wanted to ask you guys about or just touch touch on. Uh, is Wolverine fucking immortal? Like, I thought he would die, like, eventually. Yeah. Like, no matter, like, no, what, he... like, just, like, a thousand years from now, he just has, like, touches of gray in his hair? I like, don't yeah, know fuck. if... Joe, Moira... there's no point in... There's no point in trying to quantify like wolverine's age it's just whenever stuff. they need it's him to be around they're like he's still around he's wolverine you know like although right. moira moira's alive a thousand years from now so yeah maybe that makes it weird too because that's weird I, I, you're right i don't know well i don't maybe. know if they they didn't explain it very well if it was but the librarian says you guys are lucky that your blood matched and you were able to keep each other alive so i don't know if combining their blood mm. together made them like maybe super yeah. like not only did you get wolverine's healing abilities but like somehow myra's powers like extended their longevity i don't know 
Moira. 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 Yeah. Moira. Myra. Myra. Patrick. Moira. Myra. Moira. Patrick. Patrick. There's a gun to your head right now. Pronounce her name correctly. Yeah. Go. There's a gun to your head. Moira. You Good. got it. Good. You did it. Yeah, I think survived. it's because it's one of those things where you read comics. And I've been pronouncing her head. I've been pronouncing her name silently. I've been pronouncing head. her head for years. Pronouncing her head is. Uh, yeah, I no, used to say I, uh, Magneto my entire life. Interesting and every time story someone said that, Magneto, Joe. I was like, what the fuck? That's so, so wrong. Magneto is like the correct pronunciation. Magneto is how it's pronounced because back when Magneto was introduced, there was a car that was called the Magneto, and uh, that was how it was spelled. And so I think people pronounced his name that way. And they just That's so weird because I yeah. always said Magneto when I was a kid. And like until the cartoon came out, yeah, someone would say Magneto, and I'd be like, "What are you, an idiot?" It's Magnet with an O on the end. Magneto. I think we did. We didn't it. talk about Snyder Zeus or any of the scales. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Uh, oh wait, wait, wait! I hear it. Does this pass the Bechdel test? <laughs> there it goes. Does this pass the Bechdel test. Does this pass the Bechdel test? The answer's probably no. Um. So I I don't think this does. I pass think the it. Bechdel does because i will pyro's there i guess i was thinking about when mm. destiny's talking he's to just Moira. like bare he's like in the background but it, but it doesn't ca yeah but still a man is in the scene it doesn't count he's not even know. in the scene though that's what i'm saying it's just fire there's nothing he there birds, he actively burns her to death he's in yeah the scene. at the he's end what burns her <laughs> i mean well I feel there's like, you know there's i think a scene i, I feel there like might if be with that's Jean. the scene Okay, but if that's the scene we point to, then I feel like the spirit of the test we're not passing. Mm, if, sure. If like the five panel scene where I think Pyro's this, I there think, is... I think you have it. I think you have it reverse. I think the spirit of the test we pass, the black letter law of the test, it doesn't pass. Yeah. That conversation yeah. between Moira and Destiny is was probably one of the most interesting of the entire series. Yeah. And it's just two women talking to each other about their lives and how they're interconnected. Oh, and it's not about right, men in any way. All right. Well, this is how we always come down on. You guys are more lenient on Bechdel <laughs> scoring than I am. This is how it always comes down on. But so I guess I don't think Pyro three, is in that scene is my point. Like, I think that's a it's a thing in its own. All right. Well, two beats three. And so this passes the Bechdel test. <laughs> all right. But that being said, Makamori test. I mean, hands down. I mean, Moira. Okay, but can we agree? Giant, that, giant uh, this character arc. Doing Makamori it. test is the more important test, it. obviously. Is there a strong female the character? Does she have a good arc? No, the Makamori test was invented because nothing passed the Bechdel <laughs> test. So we just invented a stupid consolation prize test. I don't I disagree completely. I think it's more over a test. character in Pacific Rim who, by the way, did not have a meaningful arc. Can we talk about that? It doesn't that? matter why they invented it. Makamori the, and the Pacific point is Rim that it's a, a, a better test anyway. of writing a good female character. Sweet. What's important? What's more important that there's zero men in a room while two women are having a conversation or that two women had an important conversation and there was a guy in the background that wasn't important to the scene in any way shape or form other than well, being like I, mean, I fire burnt, things. He burnt the girl up, dude. At the behest That's of central. another woman. Yeah. I feel like if your scene includes a woman burning to death, it cancels out the Bechdel test. I don't you're I disagree completely. Because you're actively murdering the woman. But she's doing it for... The woman reasons. is murdering the woman. All right, we, we just disagree. I just... All right, whatever. Like, the woman's being burned alive. Let's not use that as the one scene that passes the Bechdel test. All right, but let us let me just say something, though. I think Magneto is stacked, and he's on the Snyder Zeus scale. Yeah, Magneto would be on Oh, Ma yeah, Magneto's an eight or a nine. He's, dude's ripped. Eight or a nine? Yeah. How is he so ripped? Is it something with his powers? Yeah. Like, what is the deal with that? Yeah, yeah he just uses he magnetic... He the magnetism of his muscles. Yeah. And... He's just constantly flexing. You know, you know those like Why? TV, those infomercial things where you put a strap on your belly and it just yeah, and they're just like it and uses and electricity, and he's like electromagnets. I got so that. Magneto can do that just with his powers. He's just constantly working his abs out, and so he's yeah. just ripped. All right, boys, All I think right. we did it. We did it. Um, yeah, we did it, you guys. So That's been a movie. Yeah, Kirk, but Kirkman, or is it no Hickman? No. Hickman, yeah, Kirkman. Hickman? Jesus Hickman. Christ, you can't even get the man's name right. I can't get, the, well, it's like Moira and Myra, whatever. They're all, but anyway, Hickman, still do a little bit better with 
with non-male representation. Let's do a little bit better. I just want to say that, but yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. and also do a lot better in writing a fucking story that isn't bullshit. <laughs> and another, Don't listen to Al. Don't listen to Al. Another thing to work it's on. It's a good story. Uh, so that, was, uh, that was the Mobius couch, and we will see you next time. All right. See you later. See ya. Bye, guys. Wait, you're supposed to say good journey, Patrick. Good, good journey, everyone. Good journey. And uh, may the light of of your life guide you. <laughs> good, good. Anyway, good. toodaloo. Toodaloo. Toodles. <laughs> toodaloo. toodaloo. That's it. Bye. That sums it up better. <laughs>